My apologies. I didn't unmute myself in time. To deliver the keynote address is Mr. Philip Tan, Chairman, Community Chief, and Group Finance Director, City State Capital Asia Private Limited. You can read all about Philip Tan, his many achievements, his contributions, his awards on the net. So allow me to make a personal introduction of Mr. Tan. You notice he's Chairman Comchest, and he's also Group Finance Director, City State Capital, Asia. This dual role, big in the charity sector and also in the commercial world, is how I've always thought of Philip. When I first met him, he was Auditor of Singapore Exchange. He had to give the green light on publishing SGX annual reports, no accounts. Now, not many people get to tell the SGX what to do. In fact, it's usually the SGX telling companies what they can do. SGX itself takes directions from its regulator, MAS, and its auditor, at that time PwC or Philip Tan. Impressed, aren't you? Now, I was even more impressed when Philip gave me the opportunity to see for myself what it was like inside the women's prison in Changi, something I will never forget. You can't erase those kinds of memories. And this was in connection with his role chairing Yellow Ribbon Fund, working with those in prison so that they reintegrate into society and do not see prison again. This close familiarity with companies and how they work, as well as charities and how they work, makes Mr. Philip Tan the best possible speaker on displaying transparency and building trust. Trust is critical for companies and equally so for charities. Philip knows the inside of both and can tell us why, why not, how to, what to avoid, just by drawing on the data bank of his experience. He's also passionate about charities and accepted our speaking invitation straight away. He has something to say to all of us and I will not stand in his way. Please welcome Mr. Philip Tuck. Oh. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you all hear me? Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. Thank you, Lancy, for your kind and overrated introduction of me. I'm very glad as a founding member of SSC to be able to speak to you, uh, to be invited to speak at this occasion. And also I'm very honored to be able to speak to about 150 like-minded people. Mr. Gan Xiao An, the young, handsome uh, chairman, to me he's very young, uh, has led the organization very well. And to do my little bit to talk about, to give a talk on transparency and on building trust, I'm very glad to. So my big reward here is to be able to speak to 150 of you, like-minded people who is so kind, who has a compassionate heart and all like-minded. So I'll start, uh, can we have slide one? We will start with transparency. Yep. Let me get onto my slide. Okay, can we change, can we have slide one, transparency and building trust? Can we change the slide? Okay, thank you. I'm gonna speak about importance of transparency. I'm gonna talk about the legal requirements and the benefits of transparency and how SSC can assist you. Next slide, please. Transparency, it's very important. It is actually a building tool for trust. With transparency, you lay out the foundation to build up trust. Trust with the stakeholders, 
Your stakeholders are not only your service users. In fact, I put them number two. They are your members and your staff. The members of the board, members of your organization and your staff. You've got to be transparent with them first. You've got to be transparent to the service users so they can know exactly what can be expected of you to help them and what needs you, you really understand their needs. But of course, you've got to be transparent with your public and your public and donors, otherwise you won't get support. The regulators are also there to make sure that you are transparent. And very important, the regulators are not only a one-way traffic. If you take the bigger uh, interpretation of regulators, which include the government, you can actually get a lot of benefits by having by being transparent because you'll be trusted and you'll get grants. And nowadays, we do need grants to help us. Grants pay a very large part in financing organizations like ours nowadays. Obviously, all this will help you to achieve your missions and your goals. Next slide, please. Well, let's talk about the legal, legal requirements. Most of you have no way, so I guess do it very quickly. Obviously, proper accounts must be kept. If you don't do proper accounting, you will never be able to go near anywhere near transparency. So proper accounts must be kept. In fact, the government in section 14 of the Charities Act says that you must appoint an independent firm of public accountants to be appointed as, as auditors. So it's as strict as any companies. In fact, in my own opinion, it is as strict as the listed company requirements. Section 16, an annual report as prescribed must be pro provided unless exempted. The annual report, including accounts, must be open to the public for inspections. And because you're doing the public, you can be you will under scrutiny all the time. The uh, regulators also have actually put up a transparent framework that is in 2008 to enhance disclosures and government practices to enable you to use it as a tool for charities and hi highlight areas of disclosures. Let's look at the chart. Can we have the next slide, please? It's a bit small. Uh, I will just go one by one. Number one is to actually, you've got to tell some, uh, this is, you can actually do much more detail, but this is a simplified, simplified version, which you must have at least, these are the minimum you must have. Describe about your board. Who are your board members? Your management. Who are your management? So that people will know who are your board members and management. And if they need help, they know who to, to, to go to. Second thing is, you've got to talk about your strategic direction and your program management. What are your programs? What is your direction? What are the goals of your organization? Um, the last part, maybe a more detailed introduction of your management, your CEO, and go down to the service directors. Very important the service directors because it's through the service directors most of the time help is rendered to users. Obviously, people would like to know whether you have a proper HR practice or not. No. Uh, it is also very important to look at management of conflict of interest. In fact, in all organizations now, when you, be, when you join as a staff or a board member, they will ask you to submit a statement of conflict. Not that you cannot be in other societies and all this, but you should submit a statement of conflict. And if you have conflicted interest, you must declare it and must not vote on those uh, interests that, that, uh, that you have with your related companies of the association. Another part of it is basically the uh, financial management governance what type of financial management you have, uh, what type of governments, go go governance you will have in place. Another part 
which is I will call it uh, I think it's like six it's six now uh, it is basically your the conduct of your staff the conduct of your your uh, your plans what are you going to do so that part becomes very important the conduct of fundraising activities is prime is also very prime uh, are you appointing um, agents? Some of the commercial people will raise funds for you. Make sure you have control over them because some of them can be very demanding and you don't want to upset the public. I mean, I've been at Hawker Centre where people come and approach me and say that so you must donate type of thing, you, know, you must donate, otherwise you're a bad guy or something like that. You make you feel very uncomfortable. So I, you've got to make sure not only the conduct of your own uh, fundraising activities but the conduct of your your contractors if you want to use them to ensure that it's done properly and obviously the 30 percent rules are there everybody's looking at it i'm sure most of you are very familiar with the 30 percent rules well on seventh it's all annual report must contain an auditor's report and i meant a clean auditor's report with no qualifications it is not very nice if you have a qualification on your report. So try to avoid having a qualification. Um, okay. The, let me have a look. I can't see properly from this side. Ah, timeliness. It is no use to publish your, your annual report one year later, two years later. In fact, most of the time you're only given six months after the year. It must be very timely when you issue your, your report. That, so the timeliness of information is very important. And last but not least, there are areas you can tell them about your achievement. Uh, this is a section where you can, you can do a bit of marketing. Tell them what you have done, how much you have helped people. Have uh, pictures of what you have done with your beneficiaries, uh, pictures of uh, what good things you have so show some pictures of how you have helped here is where you can blow your thumb, trumpet a bit and say what how well have you achieved your goals i'm sure most of you would have wanted to achieve some of the goals if you don't achieve all but at least some of them can i have the next slide please benefits of building trust trust is a building tool now let me tell you some of the uh, surveys done by the University of uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin University, and another university called the. Uh, just let me have a look. Okay, with, uh, a, a university called Villanova and the Wisconsin University, they have shown that with proper transparency, proper disclosures and frequent communication with the donors, it has raised uh, donors' contribution by about 53%. On the converse, if you have bad publicity and you're not too transparent, if you look at the NKF saga in 2005, their donation dropped from uh, financial year 2005, 62.3 million to 26.6 million in financial year uh, FO, uh, financial year 2006. So you can show that if you don't do well, if you are not transparent, your donations actually will drop and will drop tremendously. In the case of Comchess, you find that very, very often people, why people donate to Comchess? Comchess is racing around 55, 50 to 60 million, uh, and average 55 million for the last five years. And why are we able to actually achieve these quite big figures? Maybe some of you raise more, but I think we raise more, more than most people. Why, why is there sustainability? Why is there connectivity? Why people keep on supporting us? It's because I think throughout the 35 years, Comchess has built our trust. There are also new donors who come in and basically give us maybe tens of thousands in the first year. But when the trust is built up, it can build up to millions. 
What about the small donations? The share donation, $1, $2, $5, that is very important as well. It is not only the big companies we must have trust. You must get trust from our, our public, from our hard lenders. In the case of shares, in our what we call our, our share program, where you can donate one or two dollars, one to five dollars every month, is our biggest chunk of donation every year. It brings in about 16 million. We have also built our trust with the Highlanders, and it actually helped. In the last TV show, charity show we held, we managed to raise 1.5 million from telephone calls, not from the big companies and all this, just from telephone calls. In the past, where we haven't, we have lesser connections with the heartlanders and the public, we only raised about half a million. That shows that having, uh, building trust will become very important. Transparency also means transparency for your staff. You must have proper guidelines so the staff will not be confused. The staff will not be confused who to reject, who to help, who not to help. It's a very important area, otherwise you get the staff confused. It is also good to have proper guidelines, stated guidelines about your objective, your goals, and the performance indicators for the staff, so the staff will know exactly how they are measured. Now, this is also very important. Obviously, you should have proper guidelines to service users, because the service users, the people, the, the people who are using your service, must also know what they, what they come for, they get, and what sometimes they will be mistaken. They may come to you not knowing that you do not provide that type of services, and then they get very, very disappointed, and maybe bad mouth the organization. It's not a charity, I went there, and I don't, I don't get any help. So I think proper guidelines to service users, tell them exactly what are your goals, what are your service. And if you don't provide the service, please do not turn them away please refer them to other organizations. And if you don't know which one can help them, you can always go to the NCSS and ask. I think that's a way of help. All in all, it provides a very effective and efficient organizations. Uh, in, in the case of community chairs, what we have done to, very successfully is, first of all, we are very transparent to in, internally to all our staff. We tell them exactly how much money we raise, exactly where the money is going to go to. And more important, we share the database with all our staff so that they will understand uh, the database is shared by all staff so that if they have great ideas, uh, we say that the database is not only owned by management, it's owned by all staff and they can add to the database and, we, and everybody can give ideas of how to help. And obviously very important, very, very important, frequent communications to staff as well as frequent communication with uh, with your stakeholders is very important for us we found accountable once a year we do an impact report to give out to all our donors and to anybody actually to not only to our donors to the public anybody who wants it we will give what is our impact what impact we have on society what have we done well and I am trying to increase the frequency of the communication. Recently, I told my uh, colleagues in Comchess, maybe we should do it more often. We should do it maybe quarterly, bi-monthly, short, short reports of what we do, short reports of our impact. And by the way, I also want to say that don't only... Communication must be frequent, must be timely, and even if bad news, go and announce to people, you know, if you have a fraud, I think you should deal with it straightly, tell people what has happened and gain back the trust, even if you have a fraud. So it's not only good news that must be done uh, timely, even bad news should be done timely because if you've done something wrong, at least people know that you're honest about it, you're, you're transparent about it and you get help. Now what will all, at the end of the day, it will bring you more funds from the government through subsidies, through grants, and from donors. Very important. It is not only funds to the public. It is other pressures they can give you. Their time, their skills, volunteerism. So all in all, these are benefits of transparency. 
um, I, I can I can go and talk more and more about it, but I don't think we have that much time. So can we move on to the next, next slide, please? How SSC can help? SSC, I think is known for doing good internal audits and help you. But apart from that, we can help you to prepare manuals. You have standard operation procedures so that everybody know the SOP, what to do. What's your, what's your overall goal? What is your achievements? How are you going to help? What needs are you going to provide? You know exactly what's like. And the HR manual is another very important thing. There are also other manuals which we can help you to prepare, governance manual, internal controls, uh, etc. Uh, for those of you who are new, who are small, we can help you to actually prepare accounts and annual reports to make the presentation, I would say, uh, not just look good, to help the presentation to be able to communicate with your readers easily. Uh, looking at accounts and figures only, some people, it's not easy to read the set of accounts nowadays. I, as an as a accountant, I find, you know, the notes so long, and with so many figures coming, I also get confused. So I think we can help you to do better presentation, have better graphics, better tables, better pictures. Of course, another thing we are very good at is internal audit. SSCs can help you with internal audits. And it's nice to tell people that, look, we do have internal audit to make sure that our governance and internal controls are okay. I think uh, you should have an internal audit. If it's not big enough, you can use SSC. You're not big enough to have your own internal audit. You can try using SSC, even if you're not doing it every year. Try to do it every three years or periodically. Uh, SSC uh, um, can do cer certain certification audits. We cannot certify your accounts. That is, yet that can only be done by independent public accountants. But we certainly can help you to certify certain things, certain information is required. For example, you want to tell people that you have served 1,000 people. I think if you ask SSC to certify, I think we are good enough to be able to get to have to gain people's trust by say, saying that I've got a certificate from SSC to say that I've certified 1,000 people or whatever number. So those are the things which I believe that will help you. So in conclusion, if you want to build up trust, you must have transparencies, you must have proper governance, proper internal control. Thank you so much.